The study offers an in-depth perspective on multiple issues in the countries that we analyze, including uh, party law, electoral law, and parliamentary law. And uh, we are here today to talk about the developmental, the democratic development in your countries, in Tanzania and in Thailand, respectively. Uh, this podcast is also a series of a dialogue program by the multinational dialogue program of the Khan office here in Brussels. And it serves as a platform to exchange views of the findings of the studies. So let's um, just dive into our uh, conversation today. And I would like to ask you to to describe the state of democracy in, in your, your countries. Consulate, how, how would you say that uh, is the state of democracy in Tanzania? Um, thank you very much. Um, I would say um, in order to um, measure the state of democracy in our country, we need to go back a little bit into the historical and, and political development of the country. Um, so Tanzania is a union of two former independent states of Tanganyika and Zanzibar. And these two united in 1964 to um, form what we now call the United Republic of Tanzania. But um, the country uh, was under the British colonial system before it got independence. Um, and by the time the British left the country, they um, instituted a, a constitution that was spirited in a multi-party from again parliamentary democracy where the parliament was seen as a, um, a supreme um, organ. But then that did not last long. Um, we changed that system to a republican system in 1962, giving immense uh, and excessive powers to the president. But uh, we did not stop that. In 1977, we um, um, uh, put in place a one-party system with uh, the enactment of what we call a permanent constitution of the United Republic of Tanzania. Um, and since then, this constitution is in, uh, is in, is in, is in place. Um, so in 1992, we uh, restored multi-party policies, of course, with um, forces, uh, both external and internal forces. Um, and we made really not substantial changes to the 1977 constitution, which was spirited towards one party system. Uh, what we did was just to say that now Tanzania is um, a multi-party system, but a lot of other provisions remained in favor of the one party system. Mm -hmm. So now I would say the state of democracy in Tanzania is um, uh, not um, quite strong. And in fact, um, a lot of experts um, have characterized uh, Tanzania as an electoral democracy or a hybrid regime where elections are held um, uh, in different um, uh, periodically, but they, uh, these elections do not meet uh, minimal standards of democracy, of freeness, fairness, and competitiveness. Uh, thank you, Consolata, for this uh, introductory statement. And I would like to address the same question to you, Siripan. How would you describe the state of democracy in Thailand? Okay, let me mention the 1997 constitution. Um, it was drafted in order to reduce the military presence in Thai politics. You know Thailand has um, experienced a lot of coup d'etats, and every time that coup d'etats happened, um, they draft the new constitutions. So, so far, Thailand has 20 constitutions, maybe one of the country with most constitutions in the world. Back in 1997 constitutions, uh, we have witnessed um, a strong party government. Uh, some people called it a dominant party, one dominant party uh, under the name of Thai Rak Thai. But then again, in 2006, there was a coup d'etat overthrew the 1997 constitution, draft a new one. And um, the second coup d'etat within these 20 years happened in 2014. And this time, the military took a longer period to install the constitution, which is the current one, 2017 constitution, and allow uh, the election uh, in 2019. 
But that election, I would not call it um, a way to pave uh, the parts to democracy, because um, I would rather think of that election as a way to legitimize military control over the politics or a hybrid regime, or we call it a competitive authoritarianism. Um, the military could finish their terms in March 24 this year. And um, we are looking for the next election, which will be held this year, maybe in late April or um, early of May. But uh, the prospect for democratization in Thailand has not been very bright. Um, there's uncertain that we will have a peaceful transfer of power after the next election. Um, maybe that another dissolution of uh, the parties or another violence might happen. But then we talk about that later. Yeah, thank you. Uh, what, what I was asking myself is you've had in Thailand a lot of coup d'etats. Um, sort of every couple of years there has been a coup d'etat. Right. And I remember you describing this morning when um, during your statement, uh, during your presentation, that and up until 2014, before the coup d'etat in 2014, right. the electoral process was uh, pretty transparent. So what I was asking myself is, what is the um, the effect that the coup d'etat has on the democratization process? Um, is it like the coup d'etats, the military intervenes to stop the democratization, mm -hmm. or how would you see this? Well, every time there's a coup d'etat, the first thing that they do is to to overthrow the constitutions so that leads to the discontinuities of electoral system and political parties. And uh, the 2014 coup d'etat in particular, the military regime used every effort to tilt the playing field in favor of um, the Xunchao party, which was created uh, just four months before the elections. So they had installed the electoral system that uh, allow 11 single parties to join the government, allow a parties uh, which I call state sponsor party for the first time in Thailand without um, winning the seats in the parliament to become a core party government. Um, so this has resulted in um, the lost faith of the people. Um, and I think for the two coup d'etats in the past 20 years, one thing for me is uh, people of Thailand have learned that coup d'etat is not um, a good mean to resolve conflicts. And they become uh, kind of fed of coup d'etats in the future, but still there's no guarantee that Thailand won't have uh, another coup d'etat in the near future. And you said that newly also uh, state-sponsored parties were allowed to run. What do you mean by state-sponsored party? Uh, um, state-sponsored party means that the party that is favored by the state itself. Um, like and do, do, they, do they also get money from the state or are controlled directly by the state? Um, not controlled directly by the state, but um, they get some favors uh, from uh, state apparatus, for example, independent organizations, um, the judgment from the constitutional court would favor them, um, the rules and regulations applied by the election commission would uh, give them some advantages uh, in the playing field. So I would call this state sponsor party, which did not happen uh, before the 2014 coup d'etat, we had a 2006 coup d'etat before, the one that toppled Thai Rak Thai and Thaksin Chinawat. Uh, but back then, the military did not organize its own party. So for me, I think the, um, the military have learned from, from their past experiences, and they learned that if they want to stay longer in power to maintain the power, they have to go through election uh, by establishing its own parties. And right now, we have two 
junta proxy militaries competing against each other uh, during the next election. But I mean, after the election, they might again uh, join force and form a coalition government. And could you maybe tell us what the proportion between state-sponsored parties and organic parties is in Thailand? What what do you mean portion? The, the proportion. So. Uh, the pro- proportion. Well, there's actually there's only one state sponsor party, which is Palang Pacharat. I mean, the state sponsor parties. Um, the leaders of the parties is um, the f- uh, retired general, and they co-opted some uh, politicians from um, other parties. They use state apparatus um, to. Uh, to take advantage during the election, um, they use the government budget during the campaign like that. Uh, this one state sponsor party form a government with other parties. Um, the proportion between a coalition government and the opposition is uh, from the beginning. The opposition received um, 246 seats in the lower house. Um, there were four parties from the beginning, five parties from the beginning. There were five parties from the beginning, and afterward, one party uh, defected the opposition camp to join force with uh, the coalition government. Uh, the government itself, um, composed of 19 political parties, 11 single seat parties, and they have about 256 seats in the lower house. So you see the margins is very small, and they couldn't have done that. They couldn't have formed the government without um, um, the tilted electoral systems that allowed uh, 11 single seat parties to join force with them. You also um, talked about the opposition, which I think is was one of the main focuses of this uh, of this study. And I would like now to turn to, to Tanzania and talk about the role and the state of opposition in Tanzania. Uh, I've read in the study that um, the state has been trying to oppress the opposition by uh, imposing a very long, um, very long uh, um, assembly, uh, assembly time. They, they would need to ask for permission, uh, 30 days if I'm, if I'm correct. Forty-eight hours. Forty-eight hours. I'm sorry, I must have uh, misheard you this morning. Um, and that there is also there's, there's also been cases where the state uh, shut the internet down and WhatsApp and SMS. I had uh, written down here uh, just to oppress and to make an assembly of an opposition party, a party rally, to make it more difficult or even to oppress it and make it impossible. How would you describe then the state of the opposition in, in Tanzania? That's yeah, um, I think this goes back to the uh, background information that I gave. Um, now, um, having a legal framework that is um, tilted or skewed towards um, the ruling party, and that does not give an opportunity for um, opposition parties to thrive institutionally. So I would say um, op- uh, opposition political parties in Tanzania are institutionally weak in terms of organization, in terms of resources, both uh, personal and material resources. Um, Structure-wise, um, it's very rare to find um, a lot of uh, uh, opposition parties having structures from the national level to the grassroots levels. And many of these opposition parties, even the stronger ones, are mainly based in, um, um, in urban areas. And I would say that the institutional weaknesses of opposition parties is by design. It's not their own internal problems. It is because of the systemic problem itself, where the legal framework does not give um, equal opportunity to all the players. Right now we have um, 19 registered political parties in Tanzania, but only three parties are represented in the parliament and in the local councils. And um, in fact, as we speak, um, um, the outcome of the last general elections in 2020 has 
actually uh, brought back Tanzania into the era of one party system whereby the parliament is 90% dominated by the uh, ruling party. And I would say um, we have a one party dominant uh, system um, and the opposition party um, uh, does not by and large um, have um, an opportunity to grow and institutionalize and act as, I mean, uh, a credible threat to the establishment that we have in place. And what we say, why is it like, um, why isn't the opposition, uh, or how is the opposition uh, especially, um, how is it made for the opposition that they cannot win elections and that they, what are the rules that are imposed upon them and what are the rules that... Um, make it easier for the government party to, to remain in power? Um, I'm, I, I'm not saying that opposition parties have not been winning elections. They have just not been able to, um, out, um, to oust the ruling party that has been in power since independence. Um, now, as I said, so the, the constitution that we have right now is spirited um, in, you know, to advance uh, the one-party system as opposed to the uh, plural uh, competitive politics. And there are several ways. So the constitution, much as it gives um, uh, uh, political parties to, you know, to, to be formed, to be registered, but um, there are regulations. Um, in the work of political parties. And I'll give you just a few examples. One, um, the, 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 the Political Parties Act that regulates political parties has a lot of uh, provisions that work um, against uh, opposition parties. For instance, we have a register of political parties who is a presidential appointee. And uh, this president may decide to remove this person from power or not. And the registrar of political parties are given immense powers to interfere into the political, um, internal political activities of parties. Okay. Um, uh, the, the, the Political Parties Act also gives provisions for uh, party funding. Okay. So parties may get uh, funding from government subsidies, from individual contributions, from foreign donors. But these must be disclosed. For example, as an individual, if you want to provide support to political parties, if that support exceeds one million Tanzanian shillings, which is about 400 US dollars, um, this needs to be disclosed to the Registrar of Political Parties. If you are a foreigner and you want to uh, contribute to political parties, if that contribution is above um, 800 US dollars, which is about 2 million Tanzanian shillings, that has to also be disclosed to the Registrar of Political Parties at least 30 days. What happens if you disclose it to them? Will they... Uh... I mean, the purpose of disclosing is, first of all, to know who contributes and uh, what amount of money is contributed. Because if parties receive support, that means they will do their work effectively. And if the system does not want parties to thrive, then they would want to know who contributes and what amount. And if it is, um, um, you know, like it's, it's a local contributor, um, you know, you would always uh, get into problems. Sometimes in terms of, you know, we say, um, uh, you, will, you will be safe if, you know, you are uh, probably seen as a supporter of, of, of the establishment rather than uh, the opposition. So that really brings a lot of um, uh, problems to the flourishment of uh, political parties and democracy in general. Um, another restriction is the um, uh, restriction to political uh, rallies and assemblies. Uh, much as the law allows parties to hold rallies, you'd, you would know that uh, for the past seven years there was a ban to political rallies and political activities. And this ban was just lifted this January by the, uh, the current president, uh, Samia Salu Hassan. Uh, but in order to do a political rally or assembly in Tanzania, you need to um, uh, inform the police officer in charge of the area where you want to hold a rally 48 hours before. 
Now, in so many instances um, throughout the multi-party uh, politics since 1992, uh, most of the opposition parties' uh, rallies have been stopped for reasons that probably these rallies will turn uh, chaotic. You know, the, the police will say we have intelligence uh, you know, information that it will not be safe for you to do uh, the rise. But the aim has actually been to limit um, our party activities. Uh, turning back to donations, you said that there is this limit from where you have to publish the names of the people, people that donate to your party. Are there any repercussions that the people that donate to parties, and I'm talking about foreigners and citizens, what are the repercussions that uh, they might expect if they donate, for example, for opposition parties? Um, well, I mean, so far I have not heard of any um, repercussions, but I think uh, having that kind of a provision would, uh, would make people hesitant to, like, why would I be known uh, if, if I support party A or party B? So that kind of um, uh, censorship may not attract many people to probably uh, directly support uh, political parties. And probably if support is, is, is given directly to parties, this might, might be quite in, in informally because people wouldn't want to be um, seen as supporting uh, the opposition. And, and this also applies to the locals. And turning around and talking about Thailand, also about the opposition and party financing and how the situation, the rules are made harder to uh, be fulfilled by the oppositions. Is it similar as in Tanzania or would you say it's better or it's worse? I think it's better. Um, comparing to Tanzania, I think two things that be Thailand and Tanzania are basically different is that uh, Tanzania seems to be a one dominant party, whereas Thailand uh, uh, fragment tensions of party system. Uh, there are 24 parties elected in the lower house. There are about uh, more than 80 parties registered with election commission. And in terms of uh, political environment, um, the ruling uh, parties and the opposition parties alike can operate um, in the open air. Um, one thing about um, the opposition party that has to be very cautious is that the tendency that they can be dissolved is huge, which is um, unpredictable. But otherwise, other than that, um, uh, opposition parties in Thailand can operate freely. For example, of financing, um, um, the law allowed the taxpayer to donate 500 baht or about um, 12 euro to any parties from our tax refund. And um, currently, the Move Forward, which is the second largest opposition party, received the biggest amount from, from the public. Um, the laws uh, stipulate that um, anyone can donate to the parties, and yes, uh, basically anyone. Um, the limitation is that if the donation is more than one million baht, you have to disclose uh, the amount and uh, where the money comes from. And uh, the ceiling for donation is 10 million baht, or about uh, 25 euro. And the parties can also have like organized fundraising events, and all the parties, uh, the government and opposition parties alike, will do that. Just last week, uh, Palang Pasharat, the government party, the biggest government party, uh, organized um, um, a, like a Chinese like dinner, and they sold um, one table with ten people for three million baht, which is about um, 100 euro. And they received the fundings for more than 500 million baht. And uh, I believe in the course uh, into the next election, every party will have that fundraising event. So I would say uh, Thai parties operate in a more freely environment. But the biggest threat is that their chance to be dissolved can happen anytime, 
And especially if the next election, I, I speculate that um, the opposition camp will gain more seats in the lower house, bigger than uh, the coalition government. And if the coalition government want to form um, a government, they need the support from the senators, which they appoint those 250 senators themselves. But then again, if uh, the opposition party gain more seats in the lower house, um, the ruling party right now will become the minority party, right? The technique that they can do is dissolve some of the opposition parties. Once the party is dissolved, uh, the MPs are free to join with any other parties, and that's the way they do it. Like last time, um, the future forward was dissolved, and some of the party members who were elected joy force with uh, the ruling parties like that.